This is Robert Kraft, and I'm your host on SNN Network. And joining me right now is Ben Slager. He is the CEO of Alliance Bioenergy Plus. It's a publicly traded company. The symbol is ALLM in the US. Ben, welcome to SNN Network. Great to uh, have you on here. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. It's great to have you. So um, I want to start off here in this interview with a, an overview and history of the company. Yeah. Well, um, Alliance Bioenergy Plus is a company which uh, produces uh, bioethanol from cellulosic material. History of the company is basically this uh, founded about five, six years ago, and there was a process uh, used from a university uh, which had a very interesting chemistry. Uh, the chemistry uh, basically uh, allows cellulose to be broken down in its base components, uh, being sugar and lignin. And those base components are used, uh, the sugar, to ferment into ethanol. And potentially that ethanol can be further processed in biodiesel or biojet fuel. And the lignin can be processed into bioplastics. And why is that lignin so interested? interesting? It is because the lignin is chemically unmodified and very clean and makes it very easy to make plastics of. So the company went through a uh, quite uh, an interesting uh, history. Um, the, the technical process which they were using uh, chemistry wise was very good, but the reactor was not, was not so efficient. So uh, when I came into the company, I have uh, basically invented a new technology to use the chemistry in a different type of reactor, uh, which is a lot more efficient. And we also uh, unfortunately had to separate from uh, previous management, clean up the company financially. We went through a chapter 11 process doing that, and we exited that process uh, at the end of last year. Um, now we are well on our way to develop our fourth generation prototype to uh, increase the capacity of the reactor to further develop it. And, you know, we, we do that from a clean basis, a cleaned up company where all the previous shareholders were kept whole in the process. And we have a lot of interest in the process and in the company at the moment. And um, yeah, that's basically in a nutshell, well, the history of the company where we are now. Perfect. And, you know, you alluded to my next question here because, you know, going through the company's press releases and reading a little bit about the history, it's, it's been quite an overhaul in the last 12 months. So can you right. describe in a little bit more detail what the company's new direction is now? Well, the company's uh, direction uh, is not entirely new. Uh, it's just based on, on a clean basis. Uh, financially now so if somebody invests in a company it goes to the development of the company and not to the debts uh, which the company used to have they're all cleaned up and they're not existing anymore and the the direction of the company is basically to produce biofuels uh, and we have added uh, technology to convert our cellulosic ethanol into the bio jet fuels and biodiesels and we have basically added the new process to convert the lignin into bioplastics. And the good thing about the bioplastic is it's bio originated, but it's also biodegradable. And we can even tune the degradability. So from a couple of months to maybe a year, depending on the type of product you're, you're using. And we, we can use uh, to start with uh, like, like utensils, plastic utensils used in, in, in uh, barbecues, those plastic plates and all that stuff, you know, there's a lot of that worldwide going around. And, you know, if you have the good feeling that if you have a nice barbecue in, in your backyard with friends and you don't create plastic waste, but you create biodegradable waste, you know, that would give you never, always a good feeling because if you go home and you see the bin and say, oh, What's going to happen to all the plastic? You know, that kind of gives you a, a bad feel and a guilty feel when you leave a, a pleasant time. So we're going to change that. Another application is, for example, straws. You know, straws, I was a lot of talked about. You know, a lot of straws end up in the ocean and end up in, in animal life. And that's not what we want. If you look at the amount of straws, it's about 400 million straws per day in the U.S. Uh, and that's a huge application which we want to change. And make those straws biodegradable, still plastic, because nobody likes the paper straws, 
Uh, and, and so that is, that's a huge market for us, a very interesting market, and which we can do based on uh, the products we get out of, out of our uh, say process. Got it. So what would you say makes the company's technology different from some of your peers out there? Yeah, basically our technology is a mechanical process, Robert. It is uncomplicated and that makes it cost effective. Besides that, we do not use any harmful chemicals. We only use a very uh, benign catalyst and the rest is cellulosic material itself. Plus, you know, we can use uh, cellulosic waste, cellulosic agricultural waste, uh, garden waste, uh, municipal solid waste, cellulosic fraction. We can even grow a, a energy crop. If we compare our uh, energy crop with, for example, corn, which is used in the corn ethanol, we have a six times higher density of numbers of gallons per acre, which we can get out of the crop than corn. Um, so our feedstock is a lot less expensive than the existing processes. And, you know, we don't use harmful chemicals and our process is basically relatively, uh, although it's very uh, unique and new, but it's relatively uncomplicated, which makes it cost effective. Eh? So ultimately at the end of the day, uh, the cost price of our ethanol is lower than the competition. Plus, we don't have any harmful byproducts. Uh, so they, these are two very clear advantages. And as you might know, and the public might know, uh, on the cellulosic ethanol, there's an interesting uh, RIN, uh, which we can also get, uh, which is a lot higher than on, on corn ethanol. Plus, the corn ethanol is capped at 10% of the gasoline volume market in the US, and we don't have such a cap. Cellulosic ethanol is mandated up to certain volumes, which are in, uh, increasing over the years uh, a lot. Got it. So then what, what phase of development is the company currently in? You know, based on some of the uh, press release I read also, um, you're, and, and what you alluded to earlier in this interview, you're in the prototype phase. You know, tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, basically, you know, uh, in, in any general uh, technical company, you have a couple of phases. First, you have the invention, then you have to protect the invention, then you get a proof of principle, then you get a proof of production, and then you get a proof of market. Now, I would say that we are in the proof of production phase. Uh, so proof of principle has been done very solid. Uh, we, we know for sure that, it's, uh, that it works very well. And now we are upscaling it to, to production size. And you know, proof of market, we don't need to do because it's a commodity market. We all know that there's a huge market for bioplastics and also for biofuels, and that market is ever increasing. Uh, and so the stage of the company is basically a proof of production, uh, upscaling from proof of principle to, into production uh, capacity, production size. Got it. And, and just to quickly follow up, you know, who's the target customer uh, for your technology. And a follow-up to that as well is what, what exactly are you selling them? Are you selling them, you know, your own machines for them to then put into, you know, their own industrial plants, for instance, or um, is it a software? Can you, can you, or, or a retrofit? Can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we as a company have the aim to produce the biofuels and the bioplastics ourselves, whether that be entirely uh, ourselves or in the form of joint venture with existing uh, companies uh, that remains to be seen. Later on down the line, you know, uh, outside the US, we might consider licensing or teaming up with uh, larger parties who have presence in, in countries outside of the US. Uh, because ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, you also have a limited practically growth rate. And to increase that, you know, you can also. Uh, next to producing it ourselves, do it through joint ventures of, or, or licenses. Uh, but in the first uh, place, we, we would start to produce, it and produce uh, our products ourselves. Got it. Okay. So then what's your background? I mean, how, how'd you come into all this? Yeah. Yeah. Well, my background is I'm, you heard it from my accent. I'm not from the US. I'm from the Netherlands. So I, I studied and grew up in the Netherlands. I've always uh, started uh, incorporated technical companies and grew them through all the phases and then brought them to the market. 
And uh, say about seven, eight years ago, I, I happened to, to be in the United States and uh, my wife and kids were there already. So I joined them and I run into this company. I was invited to uh, take place in the board, which I did. And then, you know, that's basically how it started. Uh, but my background is, is chemical engineering and business. And I've always uh, led and incorporated technical companies and took them through those processes, uh, which I'm doing now, uh, exactly the same with, with Alliance. And Ben, from what you can tell us, what are, what are the one to two things that investors should look for moving forward? Uh, more or less value catalysts, growth drivers, to realize that value that you've talked about uh, within the company. Yeah, I would say two important next steps uh, for uh, realizing more value is to realize the commercial uh, capacity of the company, realize the reactor on commercial scale. Uh, that's one point, very important. The second point, of course, is entering into the market space, uh, starting to create revenues, uh, whether it be on the plastic side first and the uh, ethanol side following, uh, but one of these, uh, you know, are major steps forward. So concluding on uh, commercial scale, uh, number one, two, uh, starting to create revenue uh, is, is number two. Those are uh, important factors. And I would say we're halfway uh, with factor one. Uh, the proof of principle has clearly been proved. And uh, we are now on a prototype, which is, is going direction, uh, commercial scale. And that is in process. And uh, that will take up to full commercial scale another 12 to 18 months. Uh, and by that time, we have developed plans to enter into creating revenue uh, as well. And Ben, where can our audience go and find more information about Alliance Bioenergy? Yeah, Robert, uh, two major sources at the moment. I would uh, look at the press releases. Uh, stock symbol is ALLM. And last but not least is the website, alliancebioe.com. Uh, you'll find all the information there. Perfect. Well, with that, Ben, thank you so much for joining me today. Good luck, stay safe, and uh, I look forward to our next update. Absolutely. Thanks, Robert. Thanks for your time. And uh, yeah, bye-bye.